We're going to talk about the Excel environment and the Visual Basic Editor environment. So when we look at Excel, um, we have the application object and the application object is just Excel itself, the application. Then we have a workbook object and the workbook object is the specific Excel workbook that we're working in. In this case, I haven't saved it yet, so it's named Book 1, the default name. I also have a worksheet object. And again, in this case, it's just the default name of Sheet 1. And then I have a range object. And a range is essentially referring to an Excel cell. B3 is a range. E4 is a range. I have a range of ranges that go from B3 to E4. Top left to bottom right when you're defining them. If I want to get into the Visual Basic Editor so that I can enter code, I'll press Alt F11. And it opens the editor. Now, on the University of Iowa machines in the labs, there may be some other things over here like this, some other objects. You can close all of those up. Anything that's open out here, you can click the red X to get rid of until you are essentially down to this gray screen and your workbook. You know it's your workbook because here's the name. Inside of this workbook, I have my worksheet. In this case, I only have one. If I had multiple worksheets, they would show up. And then I have a this workbook object. It's very specific. We'll only use it for one thing later on. To insert some code, I'm going to highlight my object, my workbook, and I'm going to insert a module. So the module is just um, a container for our code. If we had a pretty complex program that had three or four different large pieces of logic, we might have three or four modules, and each module would contain one of those pieces of logic. In our example right now, we just need one. If I want to change the name of the module, I just highlight it, and then I can see the name down here. So I'm going to call this, normally it would be something very descriptive about the logic in there. I'm going to call it Mike's module. After the module is named, something descriptive, uh, then we can start adding subroutines. And subroutines can also be called subs or macros. They all mean the same thing. And they are just little blocks of code that are logically the same. So again, in our complex program, if we had three or four large pieces of logic, we might have three or four modules. And inside of this one particular module, we would uh, retrieve data from the database. To retrieve data from the database, there may be three or four pieces of sublogic that we would need to do. That's where the subroutines are going to come in. We'll get to those later. For right now, we're just going to use one simple sub in, in a simple module. When we start our programming, we always want to start with option explicit. And we'll look at this later. It's just a best practice. To specify a sub, I just type sub, and then I give it a name. Any name I want, again, generally it's descriptive. Uh, let's do um, something very non-descriptive for now. Anything that I want to code or any program um, logic that I want will go inside of this sub. Later, if I have some different logic, it might go into a different sub. And from one sub, I can call another. So we'll get there later. Here I've put in a little bit of code, uh, really simple. I'm declaring a variable called username. That's the name I picked for the variable. I'm declaring it as a string. Now that I have that variable there and available to hold data, I'm going to populate that with whatever you type in my input box. And then I'm going to display a message box that just simply displays what you typed in. It looks like this. I'm using this little bit of code so that I can show you some things in Visual Basic Editor. We have three large areas within Visual Basic Editor. 
This area is called the Project Explorer, and it gives you access to all the different modules and worksheets within your workbook. If you have multiple workbooks open, they'll show up down here. This area is the Properties window. So a property of Mike's module would be the name. The sheet has several properties. And this area over here is called the Code window. We have three main taskbars across the top. Uh, we've got the standard taskbar, uh, and it just has save and some things in it. It does have the run, pause, and stop that we'll use frequently. So if I want to run my macro for now, I just click into the sub. So between where it opens and where it closes, I click anywhere in here, and I can click run, and it will. I can also show these different windows if they were to accidentally get closed. The Project Explorer window gets closed. I can show it again. Properties window. I also have an edit toolbar and mine is right here. So when I'm inside of my application, the edit toolbar comes active. I can indent I can outdent. I can put a breakpoint in, and we'll use them for we'll use that for debugging. But if I put my cursor where I want it, I can click it. I can comment out a block of code, and if I comment it out, it just will not run. Or I can uncomment a block of code. And I've also got my developer ribbon up here. I'm sorry, the debug ribbon up here. Uh, and again, I can run and stop. I can toggle breakpoints up here. Uh, I can step into. And this will become very useful when it's time for debugging. So if I were to put my cursor inside of my sub, I can step into. And it runs the first line of code. In this case, declaring the sub. It declared the variable, so now the next thing it needs is to populate that variable from an input box. And then finally, when I step into, it runs the last bit of code and then ends. So that will be very useful to us when we debug later on. This developer ribbon is useful to us. Uh, it gives us access to macros and some things like that. To enable the developer ribbon, I'm going to go to File. Options, Customize Ribbon, and I just want to ensure that the Developer Ribbon is checked. And if it's checked, it shows up here and we have access to the tools. Also inside of here, I can go to the Trust Center, Trust Center Settings, Trusted Locations. Um, Macros are dangerous. They can contain virus and, and cause some other uh, undesired locations. So generally, macros are disabled. Macros are also incredibly useful. We're using them. Uh, so they are. Uh, uh, we're going to allow them in some specific locations and allow them to execute in some specific ways. So we're going to allow trusted locations on my network. You can add a new location. Um, and then you can find your H drive and add your H drive or a particular folder inside of your H drive. Now, anytime you stick a macro in that particular folder in your H drive or that particular folder on your computer, uh, it will execute without a lot of prompts. I can also click on macro settings. This is a pretty good setting here, disable all macros with notification. So if the application starts up and it has a macro embedded, it will give you a prompt. It's also a good idea to trust the access to the VBA object model. And the last kind of general thing that we need to talk about uh, is saving the, the, the workbook. So normally Excel files are saved.xlsx. There's no macro in there. Any code that you type is gone if you save it as an xlsx. So you want to come up to File, Save As, a macro enabled workbook, .xlsm.
and you can see the file extension change and it has a macro in it. If I double click it, it prompts me for my security earlier, I enabled the content and now if I Alt F11, I can see my code.